We are told to work hard to become independent and successful in life, but we're also told to give joyfully and not to cling to the things we work so hard to get. God reminds us that everything is His. We are entrusted on this earth with time, talent, and treasure. In this podcast, we will learn to live as Jesus teaches. Well, welcome back to Entrusted by God, the podcast that focuses on living life God's way and learning how to be faithful as disciples of Jesus Christ who are making disciples of Jesus, especially when it comes to stewarding the gift of life that God has given us. And we've kind of been building over the last couple of podcasts. I I commend those to you in and around Matthew 6. But we've been talking about how we awaken to begin to invest in this relationship with God and how we respond, not just as an act of worship, but an act of obedience to uh, engage uh, in our life with God to build the relationship, but also to live out this life of worship, which is the work of the people. Uh, so today we're headed somewhere, and I'm joined by Ray Bachman and Dwayne Wood, and where we're headed is to a passage out of Romans 12 that kind of speaks to the engagement in a particular context. Ray, you've got that verse, Romans 12, 11 through 13. Yeah, we were, um, I was just doing a study on, on the stewardship of serving, and so I just put together a couple of verses, but Romans 12, 11 through 13 it says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And I was just thinking about this verse. You know, as Christians, we should be fired up. We should never be lacking in zeal. We should be excited about who we are in Christ, what he has planned for us, what our future is the things that he has available to us. I was just saying earlier, you know, sometimes as Christians, it looks like they sucked on a persimmon and their faces are are sour looking and they're just um, frowned upon. And I'm like, no, God wants us to be fired up. We've got, you know, I'm in sales, okay? And anything that um, it can enhance somebody else's life is exciting. And I'm telling you, salvation is the best gift you could ever give to somebody. And it's exciting and it's something... And again, it's part of this whole servant's heart. If we truly, there's another verse. Let me just read it in Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And I hate to admit it, but when I wake up in the morning, I'm always thinking about what am I going to do today? What is going to happen for me? And this verse just really really hits me blindsided because because basically it's saying right don't think of yourself think of others when i do and i like to say that's 24 7 but uh, god's still working on me but when i think outside myself all of a sudden the whole day changes and all of a sudden i'm able to help somebody at work Mm. or do this or do that and all of a sudden a smile comes on my face and there's this, this fervor of this is really what life needs to be of loving on others and letting christ live in and through me I need to get out of the way, kind of like John the Baptist when he baptized Jesus. He said, I must decrease and he must increase. And every day, that's a a message to me. I've got to decrease and Christ has to increase because that's what fans that flame of that zeal. And uh, Dwayne, you said fervor isn't a word that we use today. What do you mean? (laughs) (laughs) We don't use that very often. Zeal, fervor, right. (laughs) Zeal, fervor, yeah. Uh So... um, but going back to, to Romans uh, and zeal and fervor, you know, I, I believe this is correct, but the Euangelion, which is the good news, mm. and uh, we should have spiritual fervor and zeal mm-hmm. because we do have the good news. Mm-hmm. And our commission is to carry the good news to a lost and dying world. And mm-hmm. I... I try to uh, remind myself continually to be salt and light to a lost and dying world in which we live. Because 
I see a lot of people get frustrated sometimes, Ray, yeah. and maybe their mm-hmm. their sourpuss face yeah. comes because of the way that the world yeah. responds, the way the world acts, the way that the world looks at the believers. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I constantly remind myself, hey, they're lost. They don't know, right. and they right. won't know right. unless I tell them. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. how do we work, and how do we steward our right. relationship and time mm-hmm. with people, right. and make sure that we have margin so that we can go one on one with people, and to explain to them mm-hmm. why we have this good news mm-hmm. and what the good news is, right. and mm-hmm. how it's a blessing potentially to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a gift. What a gift the whole concept of serving is as one of the most non-threatening ways Mm -hmm. to engage with folks who might be highly resistant to a church invitation, Mm -hmm. so to speak, or uh, that kind of thing. And so I'm just thinking about some of the opportunities. Uh, We built like 35 habitat houses here over the past 30 years, and it's a high source of satisfaction for people to sign up to serve. You know, you're building a house for someone who is also doing their part. They've got to have like 800 hours of sweat equity in previous houses and so on and so forth. But it's also just an excellent opportunity to invite an unchurched friend, whatever. Same thing with a foster care ministry. And there's something about, beyond serving individually serving together Mm -hmm. and the bond that's created and i saw this most recently as we provided a respite experience both for a group of foster care children and the foster care parents and it was like a six-hour segment but it you know it took real work prepare food prepare Mm -hmm. games devotions those kinds of things figure out a really restful experience that the foster care parents would have and i mean you leave an event like that and the people who have poured themselves into it including the planning are largely exhausted Mm -hmm. but the benefit that we get being side by side is a memory that Mm -hmm. we do not soon forget, nor do the people we invite to come alongside us in that. It's a great witness of the gospel that's not threatening. I I remember um, when we were newly married, I remember there was a bunch of young, us us young guys, we were in a Bible study, and we had an older mentor that was leading it, and and, um, he really encouraged us to say, guys, I tell you what, let's just do an experiment this week. He said, I want you to go home every day and not have any expectations. <laughs> I mean, none whatsoever. You come in the house yeah. and it's just a wreck because the kids and you don't say anything. You just kind of help put up things in place. Uh, you don't expect a great meal, but when you sit down, you just like all of a sudden, oh, my goodness, thank you so much. I mean, real uh, thanks and, and, and praise to your spouse. I mean, just think of ways you can compliment your wife on all the little things that you had no expectation. I mean, you didn't know, you didn't expect anything when you walked through the front door. He said, then we're going to get together and just tell us what what your experience was like. Well, at the end of the week, we got together and said, oh my gosh, you would not believe how appreciative my wife was. It seemed like the week went so much better when I didn't, you know, say, honey, what about this? And we need to do that. And didn't you do this? He said, they said, we all said, why don't we do this all the time? <laughs> Cause again, we didn't have these expectations. And again, um, we need to be that servant to those around us so they can appreciate the things that we do for them. Uh, whether it be our children, our grandchildren, our coworkers, you know, clergy, um, you know, people that we're in worship with, but we need to step out and serve. And like you said, pastor, just enjoy seeing them respond and uh, i just remember you know a lot of a lot of the listeners have been on a walk to mass and i won't reveal any of the secrets of the yeah. weekend but but they're there once you've been on the weekend you can go back and serve and i remember one weekend you know i was on the cleanup duty now 
You can ask Vicky. I'm not the best at cleaning up, but I try my best. But I can't tell you how much fun we had scrubbing this and scrubbing that and cleaning that and cleaning that. Honestly, our experience of that weekend was just as joyful as it was when we were a pilgrim. Mm. So again, there's something that God infuses um, in in serving that he gives us that fervor, that spiritual fervor, like this verse says, of serving him and giving us joy and patience in affliction and faithful in prayer. There's just, it's almost like when we serve and get out of ourselves, God turns the ignition on and really does something special in and through us. Mm-hmm. It it probably comes back to the second verse that you read in Philippians mm-hmm. 2, 3, and 4, where we value others above ourselves. I, I heard that uh, being selfless, mm. thinking of yourself less. And so how do you do that? And wallowing in your own stew of worry or issues or things that are uh, weighing on you, it's putting others first. It's serving someone else. I have never encountered anyone who, after serving others, was not uplifted, Mm -hmm. uh, encouraged, and basically came away with a better overall attitude than when they started Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a good word so i I, you know it just struck me that in mark 10 and verse 45 Mm -hmm. uh jesus says to his disciples even the son of man came not to be served but to serve and and Mm -hmm. you know the rest of this Mm -hmm. to give his life as a ransom for many. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, as as we consider what God calls us to, we begin to understand that Jesus didn't give just a tithe of his life on the cross. Mm. He gave it all. And we're not called to make a limited, self-determined contribution to the kingdom of God the invitation and expectation is apparently all in. Why? Because that's our model. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lordship. that's the model. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's the model that uh, we've been given. And to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, it, there's just these small deposits. There's a relationship that I'm aware of that began when one gentleman needed to go to uh, a doctor's appointment and another gentleman who happened to be having breakfast with a group of men said, shoot, man, I'd love to take you. I'd love to take you. They've been friends for 10 years, and they serve one another in pretty incredible ways, and they've been an inspiration to many others to jump in and be helpful in those kinds of ways to other people. Mm -hmm. I've always heard the phrase, you know, how many people do you know that you could call in the middle of the night and they would go anywhere, be anywhere, do anything you wanted. And, and unfortunately there's not enough people that we could name in that list of people. And probably the ones that we do list, they somewhere have that, that, uh, that servanthood heart. Yeah. Um, and so wouldn't it be great if we could be one of those people that when someone asks them, is there anybody you know or people you know that in any time of the day or night would be there for you? It would be a blessing to be that person. But again, um, it starts with the servant's heart and it starts with action like we've talked about and doing what we need to do and getting out of ourselves and not thinking of our own interests, but others' interests. And, of course, it starts with our spouses, our kids, you know, our relationships. And so life doesn't need to focus on us. When we get up in the morning, you know, our prayer needs to be, Lord, what would you have me to do? I've got this long list of things I need to do, I think I need to do, but, hey, if you want to interrupt them, you have full access to. And uh, we've got to be that flexible, and we've got to, 
you know, where your treasures are, there your heart be also. If our treasure is serving him and serving others, then our heart's going to follow there, and we're going to be at peace with disruption in our day and and guidance in a different direction or things changing. Because this verse said also says to be patient in affliction. You know, when things don't go right, are we believing, you know what, I don't like this, but you know what, God is kind of still in this, <laughs> and he's and he's still leading and guiding. So we need patience. We need not to worry. We need to be hoping in him and uh, get out of ourselves. Yeah, God doesn't leave town when affliction breaks out. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he draws nearer. I was thinking, right, you know, we would all like to have that person any any day, any time, any circumstance, this person we could call on even in the most dire things. Mm-hmm. Not us, mm-hmm. not a one of us has that person unless that person has first chosen to be that person Good point. for other people. Mm-hmm. 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 And so maybe there is a model Jesus is leaving us with uh, the invitation to present ourselves to be that person, and then we will discover who the people are who have need mm-hmm. of what we can offer in service and sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm mentally, I'm, I make that list from time to time mm-hmm. of those people who, uh, you know, you can pick up the phone and call and, um, it, it it just you know it's relationship with with the body the the the, the body of Christ everyone is uh, given different gifts and abilities but i'm constantly reminded that it's in unity that uh the world will see that we belong to the lord's yeah. and mm-hmm. I, I i think that sums up what we're trying to talk about with regard to those people who you can pick up the phone and call their selfless. And, uh, Lord, I asked myself, uh, how to be more, more selfless, Lord. Show me how to be more selfless. Mm -hmm. What a great example today as we wrap it up. It's interesting. All the, all the opportunities God has entrusted unto us. And so today we talked about in service, God's entrusted unto us the opportunity to be that person. And really what we're being is the hands and Mm -hmm. the feet of Christ without condemnation Mm -hmm. or judgment, just simply to say, I'm there to help uh, when your time comes. Mm -hmm. If we can help you today, uh, we pray that you would reach out. It's mountpisgah.org. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you, that you'd be joyful in hope, And you'd learn how to be patient in affliction and certainly be faithful and present in prayer. God bless you and take care. Join us next time as we continue to learn to live with open hearts and open hands as followers of Jesus Christ. 